Hello, and welcome to Reddit Rewind, where we go over the most ridiculous stories from Reddit. So today we're going to be reading stories from the AITA subreddit, and it's going to be a car edition. And the story is titled, AITA for suing my girlfriend after she had my 1967 Impala project taken to the scrapyard. I'll try to keep this short. I had a 1967 Impala four-door that I bought in February of 2019. A couple of months ago, I bought my first house, and that had a 2.5-car garage. I moved the car in and started tearing it down for a complete restoration. I had the body in one bay and the chassis in another, plus the whole garage filled with parts. About two months ago, my girlfriend came to live with me during this whole crisis, and the whole time she hated that car. She wants to park in the garage, but I have two acres of land with a lot of nice places to park under shady trees or hell, even in the barn if it has to be inside. I tell her tough luck, it's my house, and it's not like I can just throw it back together real quick. Anyways, I was out of town for a couple of days on a business trip for a small local company I work for. When I got back, my girlfriend was all smiles, making me food all the time, doing all the chores, all that. I thought maybe she was just happy to have me home. But then I realized that I didn't see her car in its usual spot. I asked her where she parked so I could make sure I mowed the area and keep it clean. And she said not to worry because she parked in the garage. I asked how and she told me to go check it out. Turns out that while I was gone, she hired somebody to come over and move everything related to that car including the drivetrain, body, and chassis, and all parts, and take it to the local dump slash scrapyard. I was absolutely dumbfounded. I had spent over 11 k on that car, including new parts, services, and the car itself. I told her that I was going to be taking her to court for that, and she brushed me off like I was being dramatic. I told her that it's done between us, and to pack her things and leave. I admit I was really angry, but I did end up getting a lawyer. And as I have receipts for all that money spent, and I have her on my house security cam footage letting the guy in and watching them take it all, I think I can win. Her family and friends are absolutely blowing me up, saying it's just a stupid old piece of junk and that she cannot pay back all that money I spent. And I should just let it go. But I have been putting all my time, effort, and money into that car for a year and a half now. And God damn it if I'm not going to get justice for what she did. AITA? Edit. Thank you all so much for the support and awards and everything. I'm glad I have some people on my side. I just got a call from her mom about 20 minutes ago, and she told me that I was ruining her daughter's life over a stupid car. I told her she ruined her own life. I've been gathering documentation and stuff, and I'm about to head down to the police station and file a report, as suggested by lots here. Once again, thank you all. Update. Went to the police station last night and was told to come back in the morning. Just got back and filed an official report against her for grand larceny and grand theft auto. I showed them all the receipts I had for the car, and the footage of her letting the guys come and take it as well as the title for the vehicle in my name. They said they will be in contact with all three parties, me, ex-girlfriend, and the junkyard guys, soon. And they will hopefully be able to recover some or all of the car. Just have to wait now. Huge update. They found my goddamn car. The junkyard guys apparently were in the middle of hiding it when the police came to ask them questions. It was on a forklift, and they were going to put it on top of a pile of cars that was hidden behind more piles of cars. They said it was theirs, and they had the title. But obviously, they didn't have the title for it, and since they matched the VIN on the chassis and the body to the VIN on my title, it was obviously mine. I know at least one person there has been arrested. I think he was in the camera footage I talked about earlier, but I don't know if it was the boss or whomever or even his specific charge. They also told me they would be looking into this specific junkyard for any other vehicles reported stolen. They said they haven't been able to get in contact with my ex just yet, but they're working on it. I'm just so glad they found my car. Luckily, I made quite an album of pictures detailing me tearing down the car, and so I can use that to prove what parts they had were mine so I can hopefully get most or all of it back. Police haven't let me take it back home yet, 
as they say it's evidence or something, so hopefully I can get it back eventually. Thank you all so much for the support and advice. She's gonna be all right. Now talk about someone not respecting their boundaries and property. This was absolutely a ridiculous story, and no, in my opinion, he is not the a-hole here. She is. He had every right to sue her. So I'm also glad that after reading the update, we see that uh, everything is going to be okay. He got his car back, and uh, karma is going to hit the right people. So going through the comments section, I found a few posts that, uh, well, spoke to me, and I thought I'd share them with you guys. NTA, holy crap, definitely not the a-hole. That's like your girlfriend selling a dog out from under you while you were on a business trip because she didn't like it. The audacity. If she didn't like it, she could have just ignored it. The most toxic part is that she sees no issue. Your property, your house, she throws it away. And if any judge knows the worth of that car, they would understand suing her for the costs, let alone the time you spent on it. That's a hobby and a damn good one. If she couldn't support you on your project, that probably would have been a red flag for anything you do later on. I think this is all justified. Yeah, so I agree with that comment. Completely justified, and she obviously didn't know how to respect boundaries and didn't see any issues with her actually selling his stuff while he was gone without even asking him. So he dodged a bullet on that one, in my opinion. The next comment, NTA. My husband has several old cars. I haven't seen the inside of the garage in 20 years, but he loves his hobby cars, and I would never dream of asking him to lose one. I say take her to court. Be sure to sue for replacement cost. The Impalas are getting hard to come by, and you may have to pay more than you think. Oh, and congrats on dodging the bullet with that one. If she pulled this crap in the first year, just think what she would have been trying after a couple of kids and 10 years of marriage. Again, completely agree with this. NTA and he did dodge a major bullet on this. Some people are just extremely selfish. And the last comment I'm going to share on this particular story was this. I knew within two months of dating of my now husband that in this relationship, my vehicle would probably never park in the garage and I'm still okay with that years later. Go find a partner who respects you and your belongings. So I agree again with that commenter and in any relationship, you got to find someone who respects you, your things, your thoughts, your ideals. And uh, even if they don't agree with them, they have to respect them. And our author's ex-girlfriend in the story obviously didn't do any of that. So good on him for getting rid of her and finding his car again. I'm just glad there was a happy ending to all of this. So our next story is titled, AITA for selling my daughter's car after discovering her texting and driving? Not the a-hole. When my daughter was 14, Wife and I decided we would buy a car for her to use on her 16th if she proved herself to be responsible, got good grades, etc. There would be a contract of sorts to ensure we were all on the same page. The stipulations were continuing good grades, good attitude, she could only bring one friend with her somewhere to begin with, we had to know where she was, and the obvious two, don't drink and drive, and don't text and drive. We made it clear that we were buying the car but it was for her to use. We got the car, a 2012 Honda Civic. She has a summer job right now. It's summer break, so she's out doing stuff with her friends, etc. In a few months, she'll be off to college. Everything was going swimmingly. Until someone on that next door app started posting pictures and videos of bad drivers in the area. My daughter was posted with her face down as she texted and rolled through a stop sign and once with her face down in her phone at a stoplight. I was livid. My wife was the one who showed it to me. We found out there were more instances from her Instagram stories, and we decided no. Wife and I up and sold the car. We didn't lose very much in the process, except, of course, our daughter completely came unraveled. It's so unfair. I didn't hurt anyone. Everyone's doing it. How am I supposed to get to work? What about when I go to college? Well. We said no. It's not unfair. You hurt us by being a crappy, irresponsible driver. No, not everyone's doing it. You can walk, ride your bike, or take the bus. And as for college, you don't need a car to get to and from classes. 
and again, ride your bike or walk. She tried to play the, how can you send your daughter to college without her safety in mind card? And I said, well, 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 now you're concerned about safety? And she just up and screamed. This has everyone in our life up in arms and divided. Her grandparents think we're being over the top and awful, that grounding would have sufficed. They've threatened that they will buy her a car again if we try to send her to college without one. The car's already sold, so there's no going back. I think what we did was absolutely correct, that actions have consequences, and we would be in the wrong to pull back from that. In terms of her going to college, well, she made that choice. She had a car, it came with certain stipulations, she disobeyed us, and now she pays the price. Wow, I have to respect the parents for not capitulating and actually following through on the strict things. I know many would have just grounded her or taken away her phone or done something that wasn't nearly as uh, severe, but they made the rules ahead of time, they were clear, she broke them, felt no remorse, and although it was a harsh punishment, I agree with it, because texting and driving, very dangerous. See idiots doing it on the road all the time. So the comments on this one were pretty unanimous and TA. Most of the people agreed this girl had no remorse and was not going to change her behavior at all. She really didn't think she did anything wrong. So now here are just a few examples of some of the posts that I found reinforcing that idea. Here's the first one. I mean, I probably would have given her a warning and taken the car away for a month first, but I'd still say NTA. Yeah, I agree. Again, like I said before, and I like agreeing with this poster, it was a harsh punishment, but she knew the rules, she broke them, and they're not jerks for doing it. Our second comment, normally, that's what I would have done too, but OP's daughter showed no signs that she would correct her behavior. Her rebuttal was that everyone else does it. That's the deciding factor right there for me. Yeah, again, I'd have to agree. She didn't show any remorse. She didn't show that she was going to do any behavioral changes. So they stuck to their guns, followed through, sold the car. Harsh, but fair. One more comment here. A warning might have been good if she'd only been caught once or could prove it was just a one-time thing. But it seems like it's been quite a few times she's been seeing doing it. Uh, yeah, again, no remorse. Didn't see her behavior as bad. Wasn't a one-time thing. Lots of evidence for it. They were absolutely in the right. NTA. And the last comment I'll comment on is uh, NTA even a little. More like good parents. She knew it was up beforehand and did it anyway. Now she gets a lesson in consequences of her own bad life choices without having injured or killed someone else or herself. She got off easy. A lot of people don't think texting and driving is dangerous, but it really is. A lot of accidents get caused that way. It's very distracting. I have to agree with this poster and the parents. They did the right thing. So guys, what do you feel about this or the previous story? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you heard. Till next time.